Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys from Premier Guitar. We're hanging out in Nashville at the Send Amphitheater. Hot, beautiful Nashville. As uh, beautiful Roy day. here from Mute Math can attest, it's very warm in the summer here in Nashville. <laughs> Roy, talk to us about your guitars, everything that we got going on. I want to start with this one. I saw you guys recently at Lollapalooza, and this one caught my eye uh, from afar. Yeah, man, this is um, a Sublime guitar company from um, Tampa, Florida. All right. This is their Chieftain model, and I got this probably about three years ago maybe. Okay. And when I, f I, I didn't take to it initially. Um, and the, kind of the reason I didn't want to play it live was because it had this blue finish on it that okay. I just didn't like. I just didn't, I didn't really care for it. I tried to sand it down. I was like, you know what? I'm terrible at, at uh, doing that kind of work on a guitar. Is so the blue kind of like a Pelham blue, like almost it, like that? Or it's like kind of like that Dave Grohl. Yeah, okay. Um, the, that gives me Lopez play. one? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Which is cool, you know, but I just didn't want to have another semi-hollow body guitar yeah. blue, like, you know, like Dave. So anyway, um, so uh, I, I mocked this up, actually. I was like, you know what? I was wondering, I was asking um, the owner if he could do anything for me on the mm -hmm. guitar. And because we had talked about modding it out with some different pickups as well, which he did for another, uh, um, the same model, he put some Porter pickups for me, okay. some gold foil ones. And um, anyway, so I said, well, I'm gonna like mock something up and maybe you can do it. And so this is a collage made out of just paper and some tape from an artist named Jean-Michel Basquiat, which is one of my favorite artists. He was a contemporary of uh, Andy Warhol. And um, I just, you know, I was like, hey, well, what do you think about this? And I was like, well, I don't know if we could do that. <laughs> That's a lot of work, man. Like, right? for one, a rap, and then, like, to get this, I don't even know how you would do this to put it, like, oh, man. as on top, like, paint it. I mean, that would take a lot yeah. of work. So, and just the curvature just, of it, too. Like, yeah, right. so, yeah. It, I mean, way beyond what this guitar <laughs> is for me live, you know. Um, and um, so I just kept it, and I, and it didn't. It, maybe it affected the sound in a good way because I love the way this guitar yeah. sounds for me live. So uh, it's been through a lot, as you can see. It's Dang. I dropped it, it cracked, and a good friend of mine from Clear Two Monitors bro um, glued it back. Uh, I, I ruined this guitar. I mean, this is, <laughs> which we're really hard on our instruments here at Mute Math yeah. Inc. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, but yeah, I love it, man. Just, it, it looks cool. It sounds great. Um, it's not, you know, it, it has become a little bit precious to me because it's so unique. Yeah. But one of the, the points of the Sublime Guitar Company was that they're not, you know, it's not like a very expensive guitar. You know, it's out on the road, I could, you know, something happened, unfortunately, to yeah. it. I can get another one, replace it relatively easily. Gotcha. You know, so. And how did, I know, I'll be ignorant, this is the first time I've uh, come across one in the rig rundown. How did you get introduced to Sublime? Uh, through a friend of mine in Florida. Um, he was just good friends of, him, uh, of his. And uh, uh, he came out to a show with another side project I was doing. We did a show in House of Blues, Orlando. Okay. Side project uh, was called Plastic Planets. And I was doing a lot get more guitar live because with mute math I've always been more bass. Bass and then years. guitar occasionally. Yeah, and then yeah, and then when uh, when Greg left the band, I kind of stepped up um, doing more guitars and then on the last record as well. So it's kind of lend us. It's fun for me because it 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 keeps it interesting. For yeah, me, I bet. You know, like, and I've always I've been a guitar player first and then I went to bass. So um, it personally, was just which one naturally. do you love? Uh, I, I guess I know it's I probably love, pick I love and bowl, both. But I love both, man. I, I feel like... Where do you feel more creatively free? Um, well, lately on the guitar. Yeah? Because I feel like I exhausted so many ideas on bass. Yeah. That that the guitar and, and then taking a new approach with the band kind of let out some of the guitar things I always wanted to do that I was trying to do on bass. bass yeah. Because <laughs> I always like I always tell people my guitar playing influenced my bass playing and my bass playing influenced the guitar playing a lot, you know? <laughs> Um, so very trying to take a more rhythmic approach, okay. using a lot of effects and delay times, and and trying to look at the guitar um, more as a rhythmic instrument, almost like the bass is yeah. another drum, another percussive thing in the in the band in the music, yeah. you know, which is exciting. Um, I know even though that you you're typically bass when you were playing guitar. You were really, obviously, you're centered here close to Darren, but you guys get locked in. I saw it a lot yeah. It was pretty. And that's what's so. The energy is just raw and just so high. Thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's been fun about it is just approaching and doing guitar uh, kind of from a bass player mindset. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then, just like you said, locking with, with Darren and just trying to 
trying to get as much groove as possible. You know? Yeah. Um, is there anything aside from what we see in the top here? The, the... It's all stock okay. other, other than that. And what are the pickups? Uh, man, I don't know. I should know. And I, Just I loaded know. whatever he put Yeah, loaded it. whatever he has gotcha. stock on it. And this guitar is fantastic, man, just the way it comes. Um, and yeah, it's the Chieftain. It's my favorite model. He gave me a few others. Um, there was like a Tele type and a, a kind of a, a Les Paul Jr. type as well with a P90, which was kind of used for a while. Mm -hmm. But this one, I grew up playing 335s with my dad. Um, he had a beautiful, and I still have it actually, um, a 64 uh, Gibson Les Paul. Um, 335, excuse me. Um, red, you know, just kind Cherry. of the classic. And um, playing that and then getting this, it just fit naturally in this yeah. music. So, um, yeah, this this guitar is, and it's just, you know, it's just fun to play live, man. It's just, you know, I'm not, I could just go nuts with it, so. It fits the vibe of the band for sure. Yeah, yeah. And so we talked guitar, you already alluded to that you play bass. Yep. So talk to us about your Fender here. Yeah, um, this is an interesting story too. Um, I got the neck for this is a 78 and the body's a 76 and this neck the, the original body to this uh, neck um, was a high school graduation present from my oh, best wow. friend and um, I switched it out because I was having problems with the body and I found I was looking for a fretless bass at the time and I found this 76 fretless P bass um, and I just decided to swap them one day. <laughs> and um, and this, this bass has been around for a while with the band. I recorded a lot of stuff on Armistice with it. Okay. Um, and a lot of the other records as well. Uh, I had been using a PVT-40 for a while, but this one kind of made it back out. And this is like my baby, man. I've done a lot of sessions with it um, and have flat wounds on it. Um, been using flats for like probably like eight years now. Are you changing them a lot or are you keeping them pretty dead? I have these too as well. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't mention that. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't change them often, okay. I, ever really. Um, and what just, about the, with the guitar too? Um, probably maybe every three shows. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it's a little bit more necessary. And companies uh, that you're using the flat ones? Uh. Um, yes, these are uh, Ernie Ball flats and then these are Diodario. Okay. Um, unfortunately, Ernie Ball doesn't make um, flats for guitar, um, and I think those are I normally like tens okay. or, or more, or you know, heavier, heavier gauge. But um, but yeah, these are the Ernie balls, and but any you know, I mean, good set of flats. You know, it's like I don't know. It, they, it seems like flat wounds are pretty much across the board, pretty consistent. Yeah. Uh, when I go to round normal round wound, I can really tell the difference between the companies and types that they make mm -hmm. and stuff. But um, yeah, man, some flats and I'm good. <laughs> good to go. <laughs> Is there anything else that you've done to it other side, other than like combining the neck no, and the body? No, I just swapped out the neck and body and uh, that's it. Uh, stock, the pickups, original pickups, um, the bridge, um, yeah. And now yeah, the other one's pretty beat up. It does have a few screws missing, but yeah. That's just you know. character. That's character. Yeah, man, like I said, this thing has been, you know, with me, this neck has been with me since I was 17 years old. <laughs> Man, it's an old friend. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, love it. This is normally where I would turn around and be like, let's talk about amps, but you don't have amps. I don't have an amp. So we're gonna go to the pedal board and figure out that yeah. uh, quandary right now. Cool. All right, Roy, talk to me about your pedals that are also part of your amp. Yes, um, so this is the first tour I did without an amp, um, which I was really skeptical about. And the only reason why I did it was because uh, well, kind of just to be a little bit more cost effective. Yeah. The, the amp that I was using on the last tour was a Blues Deluxe that Greg Hill had, our old guitarist, and uh, we still had it around, so I used it and in, in combination with a Palmer uh, DI. Yep. I think the, is it the 09? I forgot, just the basic one that okay. they have. Um, so I was using that with a 57 on Deluxe. That amp crapped out on me by the end of the tour, and we didn't get it fixed in time for this tour with 21 Pilots. So, we had been doing some side sessions where I would just go in direct. Yeah. Like we'd show up at a radio station and they just had DIs and I just brought my board and a guitar. And I was listening to some of the playback on that <laughs> and I was like, this doesn't sound half bad. Like, and that was just a straight DI, yeah. it wasn't with the Palmer. So I talked to, um, to Scott Cannon, our front of house guy. I was like, hey man, what do you think if, you know, we're kind of a pinch, like, I mean, I could go buy something, but 
you know, what if we just try it? You know, yeah. it's going to make things a lot easier. Um, and uh, we did. And very few people out front have noticed it at all. Yeah. Um, which kind of makes me like smirk a little. Like, it's like, oh, what amp are you using? It sounded great. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, I'm not using it now. So anyway, and the big reason, um, one, because we have the Palmer on one side, which is the, you know, it's like a speaker. Emulator. Uh, sim yeah, simulator. Yep. And then the other reason is because I have this wonderful uh, JHS color box yes. at the end of my chain, which is really like growing into a nice console. Mm -hmm. So it really, it's not like just a flat. And then, you know, I have a, a couple other pedals on there that color it in such a way that um, really give it character and it's not like a gross DI, yeah. guitar DI sound. Um, so anyway, so I could just run through yeah. the setup. Um, I start here, the chain is um, another JHS pedal. They've been very kind to us and they're a great company and just sound amazing. So we use a lot of their stuff. Yeah. So we got the mini fuzz up front. Um, and then I go into um, this Morning Glory, which has been um, my f one of my favorite pedals, maybe of all time not just from JHS, but it just, it sounds great on bass. It was all over the record. Is it, it like an overdrive? On, it's an overdrive, okay. but it's really subtle and just adds a, just a great color. And are you using it a lot? Is it something uh, you kind of keep on? It's always on. Okay. Yeah. For bass and guitar. And this is the other cool thing about the setup is that I just switch between bass and guitar here. I was just going to ask that. Okay. And it's the same chain and a lot. One of the big reasons why I can do it is because I got this uh, one controller uh, looper, okay. which kind of it bypasses everything, so the bass sound doesn't suffer really. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so I got yeah going into the fuzz, into the morning glory overdrive, and then into this um, one control. Um, it's a it's a five looper um, switcher, and um, it has three banks. So I got 15 presets that I can go to, and essentially. Um, the way it works is this is loop one, which is a twin twin twelve All right. from JHS. Um, this is on loop two, which is a octave pedal, a Boss octave pedal OC three, and then I have three delays at the end. The DD uh, seven, which is a recase. This is actually DD seven, just recased by <laughs> JHS. And again, a Basquiat. I love Basquiat. Yeah. Uh, and to this awesome, we we're talking about it earlier, the TC Electronics flashback. I think it's um, so powerful. Yeah, I mean, this thing, like, you know, it's it's like many delay pedals in one. Yeah. So I, I have some presets, and then if I'm doing recording, I got a lot of quick things I can go to. And then this is a classic uh, Mute Math pedal uh, we use a lot, and you'll see that uh, Todd has it as well. It's a D7, cheap delay. Um, Why do you like that versus any other delays that are out in the market? You know, there's so many out there. It just, it just the sound, the sound of it. You know, when you tweak it and start messing with the pitch and, and the, it just it just has a warmth to it yeah. that, that this doesn't and this doesn't. These are just so much, even though it's a digi digital pedal, these just sound more digital. This just feels just warmer. Uh -huh. um, and then I go into a, a reverb pedal, um, which I'm if doing this all over again, I might put this last and go into the, the color box uh, first. Why is that? But anyway, well, I just feel like sometimes when the delay is too loud and too full on, it kind of, it kind of um, overdrives this in a way that I don't like sometimes because okay. it's a digital delay. It, it, I mean, a digital reverb that just kind of like sometimes it just sounds. Some of that comes through. Yeah. Um, and just kind of starts to like, I don't know, just kind of, especially without an amp. I feel like in my ears I start to hear that and I'm like trying to hide that a little bit. But anyway, but the chain is, so this is just always on or off. When I play bass, I turn this off and switch and this is everything bypassed except this guy and this guy obviously. Yeah. So these two were used a lot on violence and these are always on. And I basically shaped this guy, the color box, to work for both bass and guitar. Oh, all right. Um, and, uh, and that's it. And. Um, I don't know if that was too fast or too too much information, but um, I think we caught it all. You got it. I think we got it all, Roy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I will say I, I do appreciate that you don't go the fake amp and unloaded cab route. That you're not know, like, hey, I don't have an amp. That, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna fake it. That was kind of the other reason. Even on the last tour, we had amps off to the side because we were doing this whole look 
like a cleaner stage with more lights. Yeah. So it just kind of worked for us anyway, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, man, it's um, it's been it's been a lot of fun to do the do the, do the tour this way. So. All right, man. Well, thank you very much for going through your rig, man. Thank Appreciate you, man. it. All right, Todd. You are the guitarist extraordinaire of the band, a little more so than uh, Roy in the sense of uh, time spent playing guitar. So sure. talk to us about your main instrument here. Yeah, we're kind of stuck on this silver tone. It's a uh, 67, uh, 1429 is the model, the Bigsby. I, it just, not much sounds like it. You know, you you really feel the difference yeah. out in the audience of, of the hollow body. How'd you come to, come to acquire this guitar? Um, it's actually been here since before I joined. Oh, I, really? I'm the only non-original guy. I joined like five years ago. Okay. And I honestly don't remember where they got it. So it was, it was but, almost grandfathered to you. But yeah, it's been it's been around since the first record. And I keep trying to introduce new guitars and try and work them in. And then we always end up just That's the one. This. Yeah. It's like, hey, congratulations. You got the job. Here's your guitar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Use this one. Congrats, yeah. Have, over the five or six years that you played it, have you done anything to it? Have you switched anything out? Any updates? Haven't at all, man. Just kind of kept up with it, kept it clean. This floating bridge keeps slipping down on me in this warm weather, but um, no, it's it's pretty stock. Um, and you told me earlier that it took a face plant not too long ago. Yeah, that was terrifying. <laughs> it was this stand too, which I'm surprised I didn't just break in half. So this, this stand that I'm on, the platform that I'm on, if I jump, it starts to bow, yeah, can, and yeah. all my keyboards do a dance, <laughs> and that that just, I saw it in my peripheral, just, so you, I saw the whole thing just Slow motion to it, I bet plant. you're like trying yeah. to run, no! Yeah. <laughs> I was terrified that it was just gonna shatter, but I don't know, it's been around longer than me, so it's gonna take more than the face plant. Yeah, I guess, I it. mean, it looks, it looks warm, but it looks, I'm sure it sounds beautiful too. It's fun, it looks, man. It looks, looks it, rad. It's got a lot of life, yeah. And so is this the only guitar you're using throughout the set? I know much. that you're bouncing on keyboards, but this is this is pretty much your guy. Yeah, especially on a, a smaller setup like we have right now, and like our set's only 45 minutes right now, so I'm only playing guitar on half the song, so it's easy just to do one. Uh, I do have a backup, which I can show you in a minute. It's it's a new company called a Crosby, but um, yeah, cool. This is it. All right, and talk about your little combo you got here. Yeah, so this Tyler amp uh, is a PT-14, which was really surprising to me when I got it. Um, my We had an old Princeton, a vintage one, that bit the dust on our last headlining tour. And we just happened to be in New York, where this, this guy's in New Jersey. And he's like, try this PT-14. I hooked it up. I honestly couldn't believe it was like better than the Princeton. Really? Which I love how it broke up the old the old thing, but it this just has more power and it's it's doing the same type of breakup but it's less brittle. It's okay. less harsh in the high ends. And it handles the pedals beautifully. I just have no complaints. I've been hooked on it for yeah. like six months. And is there anything that you had done to it? I guess probably not since you've only had it so it's such a short time. Nah, no, not probably at all. Even had, had probably probably have not had to even put new tubes into it. Nope, it's been great. I love it. And do you use the onboard reverb or uh, trim? I use a light amount of the reverb. I don't, I don't, our sets are usually, the songs are very closely tied together uh -huh. and I have very little time. I barely have enough time to tune, which is why I use this poly <laughs> tune. I just hit all the strings and I'm like, okay, these two could come up Sweet. a little. Yeah. But um, I don't have time to come like adjust trim or anything between songs. So I just do that on all on the pedal board. Got but it. I do use a little reverb because it's really nice. Perfect. And if and I need more reverb, the cathedral gigs. <laughs> I was gonna just say, down, yeah. we've already talked about it. Let's let's dive into your pedal board here. Sure. So uh, talk to me about what's going on and wh what you're using. Obviously, I'm a JHS yeah. fan. Yes. Um, they, they've been really good to me since I joined the band. I immediately went to their shop right when I joined because before this, previous bands, the most pedals I had was like three pedals. I used like a tuner, a compressor, and a delay. That was it. That was like maxed out for me. Was that because so, that was like your mentality or yeah, was it just like, you know, you just I, weren't into the pedal thing yet? I, I hadn't ever gotten into it, but plus I wanted to challenge myself to just make creative lines that didn't need effects. And I didn't want that crutch of yeah. just like, I'll just slap some delay on this and it'll <laughs> yeah. be cool. Uh, but when I started diving in 
to three albums that I was learning for them, I was like, okay. I, it was kind of terrifying because there's like a, a hundred pedal companies and thousands of pedals. Oh, yeah. And so when I found JHS, they were like, come on by. And he just, he really kind of held my hand and, <laughs> and guided me through like, okay, yeah, this might be too heavy. This might be what you need. And so half of these are JHS. Um, and I, I don't use it just because they're good to us. I, I use it because it sounds great. Yeah. And they're durable too. Perfect. So just go down the line here. What's, okay. I want to know about this, uh, the old sandwich guy here. The muffaletta. Might as well start with that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, six fuzzes in one. And wow. I honestly just use it rarely because we're not doing our full set right now. Basically, Odd Soul had a lot of fuzz stuff on it. Okay. And it's nice to have a couple fuzz options. And the, I don't know, the sustain on it is a really good option. If you want it real, like, Velcro-y and choppy, the gate is really good. We have a song called Allies, which is, it's awesome to have a really huge fuzz. And when you stop, it just cuts out. Yeah. And then you start again, it's a pretty cool effect. So that does that pretty well. Um, yeah, half these are JHS. That that Andy Timmons uh, distortion is great for solos. This double barrel overdrive, I can't do without. The the Morning Glory side always stays on. Yeah, that's what Roy was saying. He was a similar. He used the Morning Glory standalone pedal that he has. It just kind of smooths out everything. So it's nice to have just a light amount of it on. Um, they recased a DD5 for me, which I put the, the dude's face <laughs> yeah, on. Right? The dude abides. The dude abides right there. Um, oh, and a funny thing about that, I got on Instagram one day and I saw a picture of Jeff Bridges holding the same pedal. And they had shipped him one and he got it and he was using it with this band. And I was like, well, that's the the best place my pedal design could end up. Right? I, just, I just peeked like, my wife and I designed that because I love the Big Lebowski bed. So, that was nice. Uh, they recased this DD7 Ibanez delay for me. And I had them put cat eyes on it. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm a cat guy. Um, yeah, all the other stuff is pretty obvious. That carbon copy is great. The Cathedral's probably outside of the Morning Glory. If I could only do one other, it might be the Cathedral. Yeah. Just because there's so many. It's so versatile. Yeah, exactly. And the presets and the freeze function I use several points in the show. I love it, man. And it sounds great. And how are you using different between the DD7 recase and then the carbon copy? How are those two different pedals being? Um, part of that is, part of it's just because I have so little time to bend down and okay. change the settings. So I kind of leave carbon, cop carbon copy for shorter stuff. I like how it, it sounds with the slap delay a little better than the DD5. Uh -huh. DD5. I'm using pretty standard stuff, just like, you know, dotted eights and just quarters. Um, and for reset, actually, the, uh, most people that know our band know reset, and that's just the DD5 with, mm. the, with the repeats maxed out. Yeah. And what do you got here in the back side of the pedal board? <laughs> it doesn't have enough room, so you put it in the yeah, top. What's another, there? another necessity thing. I just ran out of space, so this, Tremolo, I kick on a couple parts in the show, but mainly at the end. Um, and I had JHS mod it. You can't see it right now, but I just had to mod it to where it, it does a hard chop. Okay. Like, cuts off all the way in between yeah. the bounces, which not all, all uh, tremolos do. So what I do is I put the DD7 delay on infinite. It get, goes crazy oscillation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, but it contains and it stays at a really nice um, consistency. So it's doing this big hum, and then I'm able to mess with the rhythm of it with the tremolo. And what song is that on? Uh, or is that just like a jam part? Like it, yeah, it's like a loop? jam at the end of most of our sets. Gotcha. Yeah, where everyone goes to the drums except me, and I just start making noise. <laughs> start yeah. just going crazy town. Yeah. And I should ask you earlier, but what, what strings are you using? Uh, they're flat wounds. Um, I think they're 11s. Uh, you might start to notice in my interviews that I don't know a ton about gear. I just, I know it feels good and I go with it. But I think these are 11 flat wounds. I know that. I can't remember what brand though, sorry. And what do you like about flat wounds versus, you know, anything else? Um, it, it really helps uh, with like plucky stuff to be really smooth and clean. Yeah. Um, 
a lot of this vital stuff has a lot of like muted, palm muted plucky stuff. Yeah. And I feel like the, the flat bottoms really cater to that sound. And it, plus it probably just fits so well with the vibe of the guitar being from that kind of exactly. era too. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Well, Todd, appreciate it. Thank hey, you, man. Thanks, I know man. you're a busy hometown show, so it's, yeah. it's, it's exciting for you guys, and I appreciate you guys taking the time Dude, to talk to us. Thanks for swinging by. All, All right, to play. Guitar, Rig Rundown, Nashville, Tennessee. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.